I'm Don Nelson with your six on your side headlines for Thursday, October 11th. It's rare to see Governor Butch Otter and Mayor Dave Beter stand together on a political issue, but that's exactly what happened today. The two leaders held a press conference to show support for Proposition 1, which would legalize gambling machines at horse racing tracks in Idaho. Whether Democrat or Republican, whether they're always on my side or a thorn in my side sometimes, we all are committed to seeing this through. And this time your vote counts as much as mine or the mayor's or the senator's. And that's why Prop 1 is so important. I urge everyone to vote yes. And I know I speak for uh, people all around the state when I say, let the ponies run. Thank you very much. Other state leaders from both sides of the aisle were also in attendance showing their support. Opposition to Proposition 1 has largely come from the group known as Idaho United Against Prop 1, a group made up of the Coeur d'Alene tribe, state legislators, and locally the mayor of Garden City, John Evans. Idaho's most prolific political fundraisers since the May primaries haven't focused on candidates but instead on Proposition 1. One group raising funds against the measure raised $2.7 million, and those supporting the proposition raised $2 million. Both sides of the proposition outraised the two candidates for governor. Republican Lieutenant Governor Brad Little raised $750,000. Democrat Paulette Jordan raised $475,000 through Wednesday's reporting deadline. It's one of the most baffling cold cases in Idaho history. 25 years ago today, when nine-year-old Stephanie Crane disappeared in Chalice. Some 300 people turned out to help search to no avail. Her case was featured on a number of national programs, including America's Most Wanted. A few leads came in, but nothing panned out. Over the past few years, a $50,000 reward has been offered for information on her whereabouts. If you have any information about Stephanie Crane's disappearance, the family asks that you call the Custer County Sheriff's Office. You can learn more about this case at our website. SixOnYourSide.com. More than 3,000 Idahoans have signed a petition to prevent Washington from dumping its nuclear waste in Idaho. That's according to the Snake River Alliance, which delivered the petition to the State House today. The Snake River Alliance says the Department of Energy has plans to bring 33,000 barrels of highly radioactive nuclear waste from Hanford to a treatment plant at the Idaho National Lab, but that could violate Idaho's 1995 agreement with the feds limiting such shipments. Our concern is that uh, there's certain risks involved with moving those, and once it comes here, it may never leave. The INL sits above the Snake River Aquifer, which provides much of southern Idaho's irrigation and drinking water. Back in 1995, Governor Phil Batt signed an agreement to protect the aquifer by ensuring all existing liquid and transuranic waste in Idaho be sent to New Mexico. The feds are still behind on that deal. The holiday shopping season is nearly here, believe it or not. Stores are gearing up with new products and new employees, but hiring is proving to be tough. With the nation's unemployment rate at a 49-year low, experts say this year will be a real challenge filling seasonal positions. Companies are getting more competitive in attracting good workers. So employers have really had to step up their game and, and get uh, innovative and creative in attracting uh, candidates mm -hmm. and we're seeing that in all industries uh, from manufacturing to services, uh, you name it. A lot of companies are offering salaries above minimum wage, shopping discounts and other incentives to attract new employees. Experts say stores this year are even hiring more part-time workers or those willing to work flexible schedules like college students or senior citizens. Retailers are expected to hire about half a million workers before the holiday shopping season, and they hope to have most of their positions filled by the end of the month. The Idaho State Museum will open its doors tomorrow after closing for years. A celebration is planned for its grand reopening. The original 1950s building has been completely renovated. The $17 million project features more than 500 artifacts, two new exhibits influenced by the shape of our state, and 46 new multimedia exhibits that tell the story of Idaho's history. For tickets and more information, head to thehistory.idaho.gov.